right. So here we are with, we've got our leaves. We've got our, our stuff. Oh, you know, let's start. I want to talk to you about this too. Okay, I'm going to try this. I've never done it before, but if you've never used shrink plastic before, if you have ever, you know, if you had kids, we've all at that age where we knew what shrinking inks were, I have some shrink plastic that I'm going to print on as well. And so I won't be able to, to put it in the oven until later, but I'll, I'll share with you the actual results. But I'm going to do a little jelly printing on my shrink plastic. And I just have some uh, assorted papers here. I've got um, some of the some of the sulfite paper that I got from the uh, from the school supply, and I have some rice papers here. So I'm just going to kind of play. But here we've got our leaves, cut leaves or not cut leaves. If you have even a leaf shaped does. Um, like things like botanical things like we've got I've got this thing that I made out of foam out of um, just that cheap foam you buy at Walmart that thin foam sticky foam I've got that I've got just a, an assortment of my little texture plates and goodies oops all kinds of goodies and I'm going to try to keep it in a in a botanical theme it doesn't hurt though to throw in a couple of circles or dots or whatever to take to play with the texture. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take just a I'm going to just see now always know that the first layer that you put down is the um, at least when you're doing a layered print and you're letting layers dry in between the layer, uh, the first layer is going to be the uh, layer that shows most. So anyway, we've oh we've got our brayer too. So and uh, something that to smooth your prints down, your hands work as well, but I like my little barren. So I'm going to start just because I haven't used this paint in a really long time. I'm going to use a little green gold. I'm just going to put it out on my plate and I'm going to do um, just squeeze it out and then I'll probably I think I'm going to do a little quinacridone gold maybe on this side. Just a little bit. And I'm going to roll it out. And let them kind of blend together on their own and quinacridone gold and green gold are very transparent so they're going to mix really well together that's kind of why i love transparent colors because they don't make mud you'll get like you know you'll get beautiful you'll get different changes of color but you won't get mud you might get brown but it won't be muddy so this is a kind of a light not too much paint on there and i'm going to first do this with i'm going to take just because why not i'm going to try I'm going to put this down because I think it's really interesting looking this leaf or whatever this is, and I might even just roll it over a little bit and maybe oh maybe i'll stick some of my, these leaves on here just. Of course it's better to do random shapes, but of course i'm not doing a random shape all of a sudden i'm just going to stick some leaves on there, these are kind of interesting so i'll just put them right there and i'm going to just put the paper a piece of paper. Actually, I'm going to put my gel. I'm going to put this. Um, if you do want to use shrink plastic, if you ever decide to use it, uh, use the use the um, sanded side down. I've never done this before, so it's going to be interesting. I'm going to see if I even pick up any patterns. I could take. I mean, you can kind of see what's happening. It's. Uh, I'll just rub that on, and I can see there's some paint being picked up, which is nice going to be fun i've never done this and I, I think it's going to look so much it's going to have you can see the pattern there it's, it's interesting all right i'm going to set that aside let it dry and now i'm going to pick up this little leaf thing and i'm going to move it i'm going to use it again it's not the only time i'll use it i'll just put it somewhere where i need to stick it somewhere and then i'll pick up these little leaves and i love these because they get painted i'm just going to put that to the side and they'll be layered and the tech the actual pattern of that leaf is really obvious it's really cool and now i'm just going to put a piece of paper on top just this is the sulfite paper this is just you know white not white but it's kind of an off-white actually and i'm gonna go ahead and just make my first layer so i'm really not trying to do i'm just going to do layers by um, doing one layer at a time and then re, and then lay, doing another uh, pattern and seeing what happens. So I'm going to take that and lift it up. So I've got this nice, very beautiful. I think it came out really nice on and look at the detail of the leaves. It's crazy. 
So I've got that. I'll just set that aside. And then I'm not sure. I've got a little ghosty thing going here. I think what I'll try to do is I'm going to put some turquoise on here. Just a little layer of turquoise. And maybe I won't go as thick as I went last time. I think I kind of overdid the paint just a little bit. I'm just going to do a really thin layer of the thalo turquoise. I love that stuff. And then I'm just going to pop down some more leaves just because I got these leaves that I bought. I don't know if I got it. I think I got them on Etsy. I think they're just really pretty. Some of the leaves are, I have no idea what plants they came from. But I think, especially these, I think those are really interesting shape. I'm just going to put them down and random, kind of random, lay them all over my plate. And then I can reuse these leaves so they're not a one-time deal. So there we go. I've got that. And I'm going to try... Just gonna, well, I'm gonna use my shrink, my shrink plastic. My even though it's the paint's not dry on it, I don't care. I'm just gonna stick it on and see what happens. I'll lay it right on top, and I'm gonna just pick up some of that paint by pressing it down. And what happens is after this dries completely, and, and I'll cut some shapes out of these um, this shrink plastic, and then afterwards I'm gonna put them in the oven and see how they come out and if you haven't played with shrink plastic before you'll probably go crazy anyway I oh look at that that's gonna be fun so i'm just pulling this off because it's still wet or the paint is still hopefully viable but if i move fast if it dries it's okay i can always put like a you know just put something i can do another layer over that but boy these you can see the print or the image of these leaves these are some of these are really delicate and if that happens and you get like this one is just falling apart so that won't be that's a one-time wonder on that um just be careful not to poke your scratch your plate like with your fingernails or something um if you have a little some kind of um i guess your fingernails are probably the best bet something so that you don't scratch it but there's a really nice image of leaves i think i'm gonna let that dry just a little since it was sort of a thin coat of paint. I'm just gonna let that just kind of dry. And I'm going to get some, oh, I think another color, and I'm not sure which. I think I'll maybe go for some Payne's Gray or something, or a little, I've got, that was turquoise. So let's see, maybe, maybe some Quinn. Oh, I've got some Interference Oxide Green. That might be kind of cool. But maybe a light color too. I'm just not really, I'm not sure, I don't wanna, mess this up. I just love the way that looks. And if I, right now, if I tried to put some paper down, I don't think it's going to lift any paint up. No. So it's dry. It's kind of a dry layer. So what I'll do is put, I'm going to put this gold. It's just something I'm going to try. Maybe just put the gold right over it and we'll see what happens. And the, because it is a transparent color, and I hope that I'm going to be able to lift up those leaves. So you can see the leaves nicely underneath. And if it's not too thick of a coating, I'm hoping to pick up that, all of that. And here we go. I'm going to try it right now. Going to see how it, see what happens. But working with transparent colors, you're going to get, in, you know, really interesting layers and you'll be able to see through, which I think is really interesting. Here, I'll go ahead and use my Baron and I'm hoping I can lift up those beautiful leaves, leaf shapes and um, details from the leaves. Yep, looks like I'm going to get it. You'll see. It's all oh, gorgeous. Look at that. I got, look how gorgeous that, wow, from the turquoise to the gold and how rich that looks and detailed. Wow, I mean, that leaf looks like, I mean, you can see every single little vein on that. That's just gorgeous. So I'm very happy with that. I'll just set that aside. Now, I don't have much here to play with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, maybe some quinacridone burnt orange, another transparent color. Um, whatever you've got though in your stash, just play. Don't. I'm just trying on my on my stash what I've got. So this is the quinacridone burnt orange, and oh boy, that's a gorgeous color. I forgot how pretty that was. I've had it for so many years, and I've really not given it full. Wow full um, attention because wow I forgot that is a, such a gorgeous color 
So I'm going to put these leaves down again, these little uh, these, and I'm going to turn them, I'll just put them back kind of, you know, whatever, which ones I can put down that aren't going to fall apart. And that one was just way too delicate. So I'm just randomly put in, putting them on. They are beautiful. And I think, though, you could coat or strengthen your leaves. I'm just going to press them down a little bit and take my, just try not to think too much, right? I try not to think too much. Um, but just put them on and fairly quickly because the paint is going to dry quickly. And I'll just do that. Maybe one more here, maybe on the edge. And then this one right here, because I've got room here. And I'm just going to let, there we go, one goes right inside there. Maybe another one can go right here. Okay, so now I'm going to take my uh, shrink plastic again, and I'm going to do another, just another layer. And I love this transparency, so I can see what's going on under, underneath. <laughs> And this is just a way to get that those leaves pressed into the gel plate, um, get them nice, you know, get that's how I'm able to get that beautiful impression of the leaves, basically, is just by pressing them in with this plastic. But you could do this with paper, too, if you didn't have plastic. See how the layers are starting to happen on that? It's really cool. And um, now I'm going to take the leaves off, and I'm going to take a piece of rice paper that I have. We'll see how... I might have to do the same with this is I might need to let it dry a little because it's uh, you know a thin coat. But you see I was able to get these beautiful details of the leaves because I pressed nicely I gave them a nice pressing before I uh, pulled the print so now what's the second level you get these details and I, you wouldn't really get these details without that pressing so. This little poor little leaf isn't going to make it. <laughs> it's crumbling. So there we go. That. Just going to pull, get that last one off. So now I've got this really pretty burnt orange color. Now I could, at this time, try, there's a really good color. I love this. It's called Interference Oxide Green. It's a metallic, bronzy looking color. And I may just do a little... So it's got to be just give that a little time to dry it's not dry i see there's areas where it's still wet so i'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of dry those little areas off and give it a little second here and i'd never you never want to use your heat gun to do <laughs> to do uh any to do this um i'm gonna just try a little uh, maybe that green gold again i don't know well oxide green i'm gonna do this so just got this and then I'm going to throw it in just to see. I have no idea what it's going to look like, but the zinc white, just a, just a little bit of zinc white. If I'm going to do any layering, let me show you what that looks like. There we go. So if there's that, if this is a beautiful metallic color and then this is a kind of a soft translucent white, it may not work, but I, it's just this is the time where you get to experiment and try different colors, color combinations, and see what happens. Because that's what's the best part about jelly printing is really the experimentation part of it. So now I've got a kind of a thin coat. Don't want to overdo it. And I'm going to use the, I'm going to go, I've got this little layer. I think that's really pretty. I think I'm going to do this on my, my uh, plastic. I'm really surprised at how quickly this plastic is actually uh, it's actually doing really well. It dries really fast. So I thought it would take forever to dry. It's not. So that is kind of fun. So I've got this. I'm going to hopefully, we'll see if it even lifts everything. I don't know if it will, but we'll see. If it lifts, that would be fantastic. Nope, it's not lifting. But I did get some of that white on there, and that's really cool. So now I'll just put some rice paper down. And see if I can get that to pick up, pick up all that. That was a really wet layer of paint, so it may not. And, I, and it's always good to dry your roller off. I keep forgetting to take my roller and dry, pull off some of that paint. And it's, it's always good to dry that. So let's see what happens. 
Let's see, is it gonna look good or is it gonna look like a disaster? Ooh, very pretty. I love that. So I'm able to get the detail of those leaves again. And I lifted off most of the paint, but some of it's still stick, some of it's sticking, but not bad. I think that is so pretty. Those leaves are just insane. Um, I love that. So now I've got some orange, some artifacts of orange, which I think gonna make can make a really interesting looking print. So I'm going to put some Payne's gray down. Now this is a really heavy paint. It's almost totally opaque. So it's pretty, pretty heavy. We'll see what how that looks just for fun because I don't use it much. It's a really dark kind of a blue gray. And I'm just gonna do a thin coat. And maybe I'll add, oh, I'm trying to keep my palette limited, so very limited. But I'm going to add a little bit of this green, this phthalo green, um, because why not? I don't use it, so I might as well just use a little drip of it. Not much. Phthalo green goes a long way. Phthalo green is a super strong color, but it's transparent, so that's what I love. Okay, so we got that Payne's gray with a little phthalo green. Now, the phthalo green is being toned down quite a bit by that gray, because Otherwise, this, um, I'm going to throw in some of my beautiful leaves that I actually picked myself and pressed myself. My sycamore leaves. And I've been saving these for a day like today. And I'm just going to put them in a random way, just like I did with the other ones. And just lay them on there. And I'm going to do the same thing because I, I think that we can only get a really good impression when we we uh, layer things. Now I'm going to take my same last layer on this and that'll be done. I'm going to just do this so I can press that in. You can do like I said with paper as well. I'm just going to give my little plastic sheet one more layer and then I can't wait to bake it and make it shrink. It's probably going to have lots of texture on it because it's, there's so much paint on it. So here's my last layer, and I think that's going to look great. And I can see through it. I don't know if you can see through it, but it's going to be it'll be interesting. I turn it into shapes. Here I've got this. Now I have to basically put these aside. And I'm loving the uh, kind of the texture here and wow details. And that's really really the best way. It's just to press those details into your plate with something and i just happened to have used i happened to have that plastic and i thought it'd be fun but you can do it with paper so this one it looks like it needs i'm going to use this green gold back to the green gold again maybe or maybe not i think it's so pretty i don't want to oh i know a little bit of turquoise i'm going to try it it's so hard i usually just run them back and forth from one color to the next but i'm really just trying to keep it limited and not the primary colors that's why i've avoided using any reds oh i just picked up my leaf shapes they're gone <laughs> oh because i didn't let it dry so if you so now i can see my leaf shapes are disappearing because i'm picking them up my brayer is actually picking them up so that happens because i didn't let it dry but i'm going to just keep moving along so if you find that you do that that's why and maybe the paint for whatever reason it's just not it's pulled it all up so that's okay i'm going to go ahead and just oh i think that one's pretty by itself um, let's see if i have any prints that i could use this one this is one that i started i'm just going to do a layer right out, right another layer and i don't know what happened it just that was weird i've never actually had that happen could have been that i just didn't let it dry long enough let's see all right let's try to pull it up looks like now oh interesting so i got very very pretty i've got this pretty thing going on i don't see a lot of those oak leaves only a little bit i see just a little bit here and there but i like the i think the color came out gorgeously just that Payne's gray and oh wow it's just pretty but it doesn't show a lot of the leaves and i still have some leaves here left over so if you wanted to get some color and just uh not color but i'm going to try doing something i'm going to use some interference green i'm just putting it on and this time i'm not i don't think if i do anything with the leaves or not i don't know i'm just going to put a layer of there let's color like that and if i can find my little 
thing, this guy, this thing. I thought that was so cool. Just putting that on top and then I lift it up. And now I'm going to take this one that I had started, the first one I pulled with the, with the uh, gold, and I'm going to stick it right on and see what happens. Because it's so transparent, I'm hoping that I'll still retain the design underneath. We'll see. Lots of pressing of the color. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what that did is it gave a very nice sheen and a little ghost image of that leaf big leaf in there but i think that's a very gorgeous you know came out pretty i could still see what's underneath with that interference color that really was pretty i'll leave that alone and i have lots of artifacts here uh, of colors now it's okay if it builds up um, because i'm doing one theme but to clean it of course you use hand sanitizer and baby wipes and stuff like that but i'm wondering if it was this i'm just going to go back to this Payne's gray for some reason that something happened when i worked with that and i don't know why i'm going to try to repeat what had happened now maybe because this paint is probably 20 years old <laughs> and i didn't shake it enough but you can see it's beating up something's weird about it so i maybe maybe just that's the problem if there's something weird i don't think the paint is perfectly dispersed let's see if that's better but that was the the culprit it could have been the culprit and that's very globby interesting it could have been the reason i had that little why those leaves just sort of popped up and didn't um didn't do really well now i'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of phthalo green in that just because back to I'm try to repeat what i did before see if if that was the reason and this time i'm going to also make it a little thinner not try not to go too thick and then what I should do is wait a little longer to give it, give that little time to for the paint to dry. So I'm going to try to get these um, oak or sycamore leaves, kind of get these back on there, just putting them on. And I'll do the same thing. I'll just, this time I won't do it on the plastic. This time I'm going to do it on paper so you can see. But I love that. That's the only way I can get detail because I've tried doing leaves before and I was always disappointed. Um, the leaves, just the details wouldn't show. And I'd always see other people, they'd have gorgeous details in their leaves. And I thought, how do they do that? So this is how you just have to press in. Your first layer has to be pressed in. Let's see, put that over here. Let's see if I can find another one. There's another one right there. And I'll, I'll just put it right there. So you can kind of make a design. So this one I'm going to use the paper this time instead of the uh, instead of the plastic because most of I'm sure most, 90 I, I can't imagine you would have had plastic uh, in your collection. There might be one person in here that I think may have plastic, uh, some strange plastic, but it's something if you ever wanted to play with. I, we did do this. I think we did some shrink plastic in a club maybe a year and a half ago. Or long. It was a while back. It was in the first beginning parts of the club and I think we did I do I do remember doing it once I think maybe there were three people in the class so I don't know uh, here we go so I'm going to pick it up now here is just a silhouette of the leaves very and you know, very clear you know very nice outline of that so now the I'm going to pick up those little uh, before they get stuck <laughs> too much too much longer all right, so I'm going to take these up, lift them up, and I'll just set them to the side. And I try to keep the same leaves. You can do many prints with the same leaf as long as you don't get too much acrylic paint on it. And these are very, very, you can see each little detail of those veins. Very nice there. Okay, so now this is where patience is the virtue. <laughs> I gotta let that dry. All right, so hopefully that's dry enough. Um, if it isn't, just I don't think it is. It, it, basically, I want it to dry to the touch. I don't want it to come off my uh, with my fingers. But all right, so I'll give that a little second to dry, and I'm gonna pick my colors. Maybe a little zinc white might be fun too. But I just think these, maybe in a tiny bit of zinc white, might be fun. So I'll go ahead and put those, get them ready. 
kind of wave it with my hands. <laughs> and I'm hoping that I don't lift up the color. So patience, give it some things, time to dry. And I'll know right away if I'm not patient because then I'll, the color will lift. My brayer will pick up the color, the wet color will lift. And I don't want that to happen. So let's see, hopefully it will be okay. I'm just gonna put a touch of zinc just for fun right there and a little green gold right there. So I'm gonna just, hopefully they won't lift it. Nope, looks like it's good. Yeah, and how do you know which white to use? When to use which one? I'm I always use zinc white when I'm mixing. Um, the titanium is only good if you want opacity, right? You so to cover up yep. everything. So the zinc okay. white is translucent white, and uh -huh. it won't. Uh, all you know, you'll still be able to see through it. So sure. yeah, that's kind gotcha. of. The, I like having both. You can even mix the two to give like a semi, you know, opaque or semi transparent. Um, leaf. Now here I've got my, it's ready to go. I'm going to just go ahead and take a, pad, a piece of paper, regular sulfide paper, and I'm just going to pull this print. And I don't use zinc as much as I use the uh, titanium because, you know, I mean, titanium is a good coverage, you know, and the zinc is a good mixing white. And that I don't use them that in watercolors. I never use it because the white of the white is your watercolor paper, you know, the background. But um, I like mixing it to make bright, brilliant, bright colors without sort of. But then they don't look pastel. They look more bright, but they don't have that pastel feature. Okay, so let's see what happens. Let's see what we get. Oh boy, fun, fun, fun! Here it comes. So I've got these beautiful. Oh wow, that. And that zinc white lightened it up. And there's that green gold. Wow. So it pulled off almost every bit of paint on it. And look at those colors. Wow. So my new best friend, I forgot about you, Quinacridum bird orange. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to remember. I mean, wow. <laughs> so that burnt orange mixed with the gold and uh, these green, dark green, Payne's gray leaves are just fabulous. Oh boy. Can't wait to play with that some more. So here I've got this silhouette thing that needs a little help. Now you could just do, um, you know, it'd be fun, is um, this just looks like it needs another layer. So I'm going to do a layer of, I love this color. I'm going to go back to this Quinn, Quinn orange, Quinn burnt orange. I'm going to use some Quinn gold. I'm just going to throw these color, oops, got it on my knuckles. Just going to put them together. It is fall after all, right? So we can do this. Um, there's any colors. I like these warm colors and they just seem to work together and I'm not creating icky, muddy colors, which is pretty fun. Now I'm just gonna do a layer of color. That's just, I'm not even trying to, or I could like throw in some uh, some little dots. There we go, I'm just gonna throw in some texture just because, why not? A little bit of texture. I put it on the corners and over here. I gotta move my stuff out of the way. Yeah, like that. So now I've got some texture, but I didn't, you know, we'll see how it textures the leaves. I'm gonna lay the back on, and now I'm just gonna press. And we'll see what it looks like. I can see why some people stay up till two in the morning or three in the morning to do these. It's just amazing. Okay, here's the oh yum yum yum. Okay, so look at that, what happened. So that those now we have the patterns of, of the leaves just by a very simple process, was able to get those patterns inside the silhouette leaves and that's changed it um, drastically. Now there's one little more layer I think I would like to do with this just to finish it off and I'll, I'll show you what it is. I've got a little interference green, which is, I love this color. It's a fabulous color. There's interference colors or like you can get greens, you can get gold and it's mixing some with somewhat with my uh, gold, which is really pretty. It's warming it up a little bit. And I'm just going to take, oh, take some of these little, uh, these like this. I'm just going to throw some of my sycamore leaves on it here and there. 
I don't want to do too many because I, that paint's going to dry really fast. So I'm not going to spend too much time. You know, just, there we go. Oops. There, and then one more. And as I keep working, my leaves are going to get more and more painted and so much, it's so pretty. So there we go. And now I'm going to lay that on top of what I just, this picture I just, or the print I just did. So that one. So I'm just going to do, um, but with the leaves on it, is that a really make a nice silhouette shape? And then let's see how it looks. There it is. I love that. There's a little subtle layer of the, you can see the um, silhouette of the leaf. So how it's almost reminding me of the negative painting that we did with the watercolors. We're getting these, these depth, this depth. Um, the interference just sort of lightened up that dark and just brightened it up a little bit. So now I've got these leaves with the beautiful interference color underneath. And I'll do one more little layer. We'll see what, what happens. All right, what can I do now? What should I? All right, this one needs this one needs a little detail. Just kind of sort of asking for detail. But this time, just for fun, I'm gonna try. Um, I have another, I think I might have some other interference colors. This one is a interference blue. It's been a while since I've used it, but hopefully that's dry. We'll see. And the thing, the thing I want to do with this one, I think, is also to create some color or to create some uh, texture. So I've got a little interference blue. Maybe I'll mix it with a little interference green too, just for fun. Let's see. Just a little dribble here and there. Thin, very thin coating. I'm not going to put too much on. And I'm going to do again. I love these little dots. I thought those came out really well. If I could even just roll it over and then just roll it. And then maybe do another, And you know, there we go. Just little textures. And now I'm going to take the, this one that's dark and it needed some help. I'm going to put that right on top. And we'll see what it looks like. It may be more intense than I hoped for, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, it's lovely. Okay. So what I have now is a very lovely, you can see the, the pattern, still the layers underneath are still showing because I'm not using opaque colors. I've got this beautiful, I can see some of the, just a very hint of the sycamore leaves. So yeah, that's very pretty. That'll make a nice origami paper or something. And then I can just keep going. I think it'd be fun to do a little more with this. I'm um, just keep playing with leaves and layers. And um, this one, let's say, if you just take a stencil and stay right on top like that. I've never done this, but I'm gonna try it just for something fun. Oops, hit my camera there, oops. <laughs> I'm just gonna put some paint right on. This is that weird paint that's sort of old. We'll see what happens. I'm just going to roll it right on there. Hmm, interesting. It's very sticky. <laughs> I'm rolling it right over there, over the thing. And then I'll add a little zinc white because it just, that color is very dark. And just mix it right on the, on the uh, plate. And I like the little blotches that it's giving. And when I'm rolling over this, this uh, stencil, it create my brayer is actually creating a print as well. It's interesting how, how that's working. And I'm going to lift that up, pick that up, and I've got a very strong impression of that. And I'm going to put, I'm just going to pick, get a new piece of paper, and I'm going to just grab that piece. So that'll be the first one. I've got some paint on the hand, and I'm smearing it on the back. <laughs> Surprised I don't get messier than I do this. So I'm gonna pick up this very strong image of that leaf shape, which I think is fun. And next step is I'm gonna put that leaf, I'm gonna leave that like that, because it's got, there's still a ghost of that. And I think I'm gonna use a little some green. I'm gonna go right in the center of that where that is, right there. If you use a foam brush, you can use a foam brush. I'm going to try to keep this brayered only in the section of the leaf, not anywhere else. 
Just trying to keep that right in contained in that little right in there. Kind of a loose, you know, kind of loosely. And maybe I think I'll throw a little interference. Oh, blue, just on the outside, just a just a little bit on the outside. And just kind of not worried about how perfectly it is. Make the more messy, the better. So there I've got my little thing happening here. There's still a ghost print of that. And I'm going to lay it right back on top of the old one. I'm not going to position it perfectly because I don't have a registrations, registration marks, but it'd be close enough. Oh, I see I'm getting paint everywhere. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to see how this does. Yeah, yeah. So what I did was, you can see it's off a little because my registration's off, but I was able to kind of place the paint kind of, it's kind of fun. It looks like a monolithic lip, leaf, I guess. Um, this would be, I can always do like, take some cut color and actually I see some of the color didn't lift right there. So what I could do, I'm just gonna do it again. I think this time though, I'm gonna use a little, where's that quinacridone gold? Where are you? There it is, right there. And I put it right where that, for some reason that just didn't lift. I mean, didn't the color didn't pick up there. So I'm just gonna do it like there. And then I'm gonna go right in this, just lay it right there. And then let's see what happens. So you can really place your paint more, you know, it's much more controlled than you think. Oh, yes, 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 that's what I was looking for. So what I was able to get was, I was able to get that last layer and I was able to fill that in because I just thought that looked too white. But I could do the same thing here. I see there's a little area here. So what I could do, very thin amount, because I know my it's over here. I could use, cool. let's see, what could I pick up? Maybe some of this, a little bit of this orange, just to see, just a teeny bit. And I'm just going to bring it, same thing on this side of the leaf. <laughs> just for fun. And then what I could do is make a, a, some patterns. Why not? There they are. Maybe even one of, one of these pattern things, these little, there, like that. And then I'm gonna just, I might be overdoing it, but I, you know, sometimes you can overdo it. Sometimes you, it's good to know when to stop, but I don't wanna stop. I just wanna try it again. So now I'm gonna place it pretty much over the same place and see what happens. Okay, let's see, oh yeah. So I probably went overboard, but you can see I was able to create another layer. And I, I could have, should have stopped where I was, but <laughs> I don't mind it. Now, if I wanted to get rid of that a little bit, I can always take my interference color or my white, which let's see, that's this side of the picture. So I'm gonna take some interference green and just go right in that spot. And I'm gonna just take off all that orange that I had. I think that was just overkill. And maybe just a little touch of that green is probably gonna, in different parts of the plate. And then maybe just take it and just do some textures again. And now it'll look like I meant it to be. But like, it could be that I could have stopped two prints ago, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. They might love it and I might not. So, it's looking interesting. I think it's just that monolithic leaf that just kind of bothers me a little bit. But see how much layering I can get with that and just little splotches of color. And I see that I've got some leftover um, paint here. So I'm going to take, oh, which one do I want to take? And maybe just, you know, I don't want to waste paint. So I like to, especially now everything's in the same, I've got all the same colors. And I just picked up a little bit of texture on that, but not much. And I've got a, I really like the way these prints came out. Remember this one with the leaf here, the very brilliant. There's no metallic in this at all. I really love the colors. I think they're really saturated. And this one has um, some of the interference green that kind of layered over it. And then this one is that very sort of subtle. Um, it could use some darkness and I, you know, but I don't mind it. I think I might use it for something. 
Um, I like this one on the rice paper. I think that one looks, shows the details of the leaves really beautifully. And this is the final, the last one is this shrink plastic. So what I'm going to do, it's dry now. And my plan is, is to take, uh, to cut up some shapes. And I think I might do large leaf shapes, just kind of in random, you know, like, I mean, I'll just cut some out right now, actually. So what I was thinking is to make some, like maybe this big, because the thing about shrink plastic, when you cut, uh, when you uh, work with it, it's going to shrink a lot smaller. So um, there we go. I've got one leaf. So I can just cut out, and make shapes of leaves, and then I'll put that in the oven. I'll just make sure it's nice, and I'll probably put a hole in the top. Um, so it's colored on both sides. That's what's going to be great. In the Color is going to be much more concentrated after I shrink it. It'll be like crazy. It might be really texturized. So I can't wait to do it, and I'll, I'll share with you what happens with that. Also, what you can do with this plastic is you really could use it to make shapes as well. You know, if you have shrink plastic and you haven't shrunk it yet, you can actually make your you can make uh, shapes that you can use for your jelly plate. So there is our class today. Now. Um, this little thing, I'm going to let it dry for a while, and sometimes I've let you know, plates dry for a long time, and um, I just use the hand sanitizer uh, to get that dried up stuff off, and then I'll uh, go back with my baby wipes just to clean it up and stick it back. Now, so, they, yes, so best, oh yeah, Karen, the shrink plastic will make great charms for the tags you create. Exactly. That's kind of the idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got the that's it the those tags that we did last week the watercolor tags this these once i shrink them they'll be like a nice little uh, plasticky bead i think they're gonna look gorgeous yes so punching a hole and when you do this if you do shrink plastic and you want to get it i think it is such a fabulous uh product to play with it's it's like it makes you can make beads you can make jewelry embellishments um, so you, you want to get a hole punch that's going to be a bigger hole than you think, like, like, um, because it does shrink quite a bit. So, um, I like the hole. Let me grab that. I'll grab it, show you the hole that I'll use. It's just a standard office supply. Let me find it. I know it's here. Um, this is a standard office supply hole punch nothing fancy to it so what i'm going to do is i'll shape i could have I'm going to kind of round this out a little bit at the top because these really get sharp they get really sharp i mean even the edges on the uh, because it shrinks down you're going to have a really sharp edge so i'm going to go ahead and punch the hole right there and beep, beep, beep. here we go so now i've got the hole there and, the, and when i get it out of the oven it's going to be about yay big like that so it'll be perfect for those tags so you're so right so i can't wait to play with those and i'll make a few of those and shrink them and i'll put them i'll take a picture of them and show them um i think that's great it adds dimension to your projects to be able to do that and i thought it'd be fun to play with the jelly plate and shrink plastic because you know i've got lots of shrink plastic and i think it's it just to be a really fun project I think it'd be fun to add some metallics to that too. And what you could do, if let's say you wanted to add more detail, this is a time like I could use a paint marker if I have a metallic, you know, any paint markers you can use or you can do like to make the lines, you can actually draw on top and wait till those dry and then stick them in the oven. So there we are.